you can add solar to a house and you can add solar to a you know pretty efficient house but you can't get to that net zero energy without some of the things you've done here tap like and smash the subscribe button hey guys it's matt hoots here with sawhorse and lots of builders that you know friends of mine they have houses that say hey this house is solar ready but what does solar ready really mean it means that you can put solar on a house so why not just put solar on a house and sell it that way my friend steven behind me has this little first ever net zero energy community built by Brightwater Homes. He's gonna kind of give us a tour of what they do to make their houses solar ready and also have the solar on us. So when you buy one of their houses, it's a complete package in your, your um, net zero energy. Steven, he's with Brightwater Homes. And I saw that he posted something on LinkedIn. It was about how you guys are able to go with, first of all, the first net zero energy community, I wanna say, in Atlanta or Georgia. That, that we're aware of, yes. That you're aware of. And, and also like some of the tricks and techniques that you have because you can add solar to a house and you can add solar to a you know pretty e efficient house, but you can't get to that net zero energy without some of the things you've done here, reducing load calculations, air sealing, and um, just kind of want to talk to you about some of those things you guys did here to share with others to you know see what makes a, a bright water house or home uh, you know, amazing house for your clients. Absolutely. No, I appreciate you coming out, Matt. We've been building to a pretty high level of sustainability and energy efficiency, but with our commitment to net zero energy, we knew we had to up our game some. So we've been hitting mid fifties with the HERS ratings. We've been hitting around a 2.8 average uh, ACH 50. So what I want to show you is a couple of things that we're doing that are going to help us bring that number down. So we can look at our wall assembly here which is gonna be the most impactful part of our construction method. So we're looking at a lot of alternative framing and then some additional ceiling methods. So we do have st staggered stud framing going through, which is gonna reduce our thermal bridging by reducing the amount of studs. So we're gonna have a stud every, just on our corners in our windows where we're actually gonna have thermal bridging. Uh, all of our field areas in our walls are gonna have continuous insulation. Uh, and then we've got, of course, the, you know, the open corners so we can get our full insulation in. Um, and then if you look at our headers, we're doing a single ply engineered header, which is allowing us to get a fully insulated header in as well. So when we look at a wall on the wall assembly, we have to look at a total wall insulation. So wood going in the wall is very minimal, you know, maybe one R value you know, per inch or something going through it. So we're looking to eliminate as much of the wood in the wall as we can. So using alternative framing methods allows us to get more insulation into the walls and up our total wall insulation value, our total R value in the walls. So when we get more insulation in the walls rather than wood, that's gonna give us a more efficient home and then it's gonna allow our HVAC systems to work more efficiently using less energy, reducing energy bills. All right, so with, with net zero energy homes, we're obviously putting solar, which is bringing our, our HERS rating down to zero. The biggest energy consumer in a home is your HVAC system. So a, a huge impact of that is to, one, reduce the sizing of the HVAC system, HVAC system and reduce its runtime uh, so that we can minimize the uh, energy needed for it. So part of that is going to be our air seal. So we're using the ZIP system on the exterior along with some different flashing methods to give us an extremely tight envelope on the outside. And then we have additional air sealing methods, which you see here through some of the, around the windows and doors and through the stud packs and the base, the bottom plates to uh, help us as a secondary measure on the interior to help get us a tighter envelope. So code minimum is 5ACH50. And we have been hitting, like I said, about a 2.8, our goal for this is to get under one. So we are striving and our energy modeling is, is leading us to believe that with the added insulation, with the added air sealing measures, with the reduced thermal bridging, it's gonna get us to that one or under ACH50, uh, which then is going to, lim you know, it's gonna help us do a, a less, less tonnage on our HVAC systems and less runtime on our HVAC systems. Really? So, I mean, there is, there's some upfront cost. There's additional yeah. cost to go to net zero energy. So. We, we have seen that the added costs that are needed to get homes to net zero energy is in, you know, in the 40 to 60,000 range that we're looking at. But the investment of that is then providing better homes for our buyers and then homes that are also going to perform so much better than the average home 
in the decades to come. But then for the buyer, while the upfront purchase price will be increased some to account for the, the better built home, the energy cost, the utility cost, the livability of the home is gonna be so much more impactful and save the homeowner's cost uh, in, in their pocket through the life of living in the homes. And then it's also transferable because the home is built to that level so that not only the initial buyer, but once they resale, the next people that, that own it will also realize those savings. So if you're strictly looking at a, you know, a, a spec home or production home where you want to offset, you could do more with your assemblies, you could do more with your envelope, and then you could reduce your HVAC sizing and reduce your HVAC equipment, then that cost could wash out. All right, Stephen, so this is very insightful information. So for what I heard from you, you've always been installing solar, and, and, and you offer that in all your communities. But in order to have less solar panels, because solar's not cheap, right. and we're looking at it as like, you know, if you have a very inefficient house, there's, no, there's not enough rooftop for all the solar. So in order to be able to get enough panels on the roof, what you're having to do is, first of all, make your building envelope tight, add more insulation, that way your HVAC load comes down so you can actually fit enough solar. Because if you didn't do that, you, you probably have to put some on the neighbor's house and have some sort of community right. solar to make it a net zero right. community. That's right. So, well, they, this, this is very good information. I appreciate you sharing that with us. And if you guys want to find out more about his product and also like where to to find some of his houses, like what's, what's the best place to find out more about your company? Those are brightwaterhomes.com. We're on Instagram at brightwaterhomes. Uh, you can hashtag uh, at live brightly. And we're, uh, yeah, Instagram's our main social. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Right. Thanks, Matt. Right. Thanks again for joining us on this journey as we continue to explore better building products and practices to help you have a more durable, healthy, safe, comfortable, and energy efficient home. For your convenience, we've uploaded other videos just like this. If you enjoyed this video, we appreciate it if you hit the like button and also hit subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any other questions about this topic.